Session of City Council will now come to order. We have uh, four items on here, and I've got a couple items at the end I want to talk about. We have a number one, Sister Blandina Park on a 20 year lease. Uh, we have Monsanto Hill Hospital funding request. We also have the Space Create Advisory Panel report, and we have the Monuments Lake report. So let's go ahead and get started with item one, which is a Citrus Bandina Park. Mike, you want to? Uh, thank you, Mayor, you. members of council. Um, as you know, uh, Sister Blandina Park has been in the works for over a year um, since I've been in this seat. Uh, we've been trying to work some, some things out. Uh, we have an opportunity. Uh, to apply for a $350,000 GOCO grant. Um, there's some issues. That deadline is October 24th. That's this Thursday. Um, there's resolutions required. There's some lease negotiations required. But uh, I've asked uh, Kip Hampton to come and present and try and I'll lead some of the concerns that I have, that I'm sure you have, um, and see if we can move forward or not. Uh, so, with that, uh, it is So, good evening, good and evening. thank you for having us tonight. I'm Gina Chimino. I'd like to start by apologizing for this late, late tardiness um, of this application. Um, to be honest, Sister Blindina Park is not a new idea. Um, like Mike said, you know, we've been working on it for a while with previous um, you know, people with the city. And, you know, uh, we have a lot going on and I'm not making excuses, but it, this date really crept up on us. So I want to apologize for that. Um, and with that being said, I also want to thank the city um, for being such great partners of ours. I mean, we've been, I'm a, I mean, I've been active in what we've been doing in Trinidad for 10 years, myself. And to, to see what we've been able to do in this town, in this community, in the last 10 years, we, we never could have done it without, without you guys. Um, you know, beginning with Mont Carmel. I mean, you know, that's a $12 million facility that is owned by the community and it's run by a board of directors. It's not ours. We built it and, and we deeded it. Um, we, uh, other projects, um, the Purple Toad, you know, we built it, but we recruited the help of a restauranteur out of Colorado Springs. We're not in the food business. Um, that would be a scary thing if we were operating that restaurant, I'll tell you that. Um, Toyota, oh my gosh, the struggles that we went through with Toyota and to get Toyota built in downtown Trinidad, I, I, it was amazing. I mean, I, I'm sure you guys remember that. Um, at the time, it made more financial sense to take Toyota from here and take it to Alamosa because we had, where we built it, it was problematic, right? And they wanted it in Alamosa. Toyota wanted it in Alamosa. We fought to keep it here. And we fought to keep it downtown because 
our mission is is to help the community in in, in a way that um, through through commitment um, to the community, and it's not always about money. And Toyota is a great example of defying that that monetary model and 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 bringing it into the community. Um, look at Fisher's Peak. I mean, you guys did amazing. But you know what? It started where we introduced the seller to the city and then to the funders. And that was a, took a, a, you know, two years. And now we've got the second largest state park. This is all about partnerships. And you guys, over the last 10 years, have been fantastic to work with. And I just want to thank you for that. So Sister Blandina is and that can be another example of a public private partnership. Um, you know, to date we have about you're not gonna believe this, but I think it's true. We've invested over six hundred thousand dollars in purchasing the land, tearing down tear down the buildings, uh, mitigate the asbestos, um, uh, oh, preserve the wrap and wrap fascia, right? So that's Put away because we want that to be the entrance <coughs> to the park, and then preparing the site. Six hundred thousand, the way it sits right now. <clears throat> what we would like to do initially, so we can write for this grant, or the city can write for this grant, is lease it to the city um, initially, and then when we get the grant, um, we can de we can convey it to the city. By leasing it first, um, it's it's a it's a no lose situation for the city, right? If we don't the, don't get the grant, then the lease is null and void. Our first choice is to be is to donate this to the city. However, this is not an asset that the city wants. We have other options, um, private development options, but our preference is to make it a city park. So, uh, with that being said. I'm going to turn it over to Sid Sai. Go back to the pictures. Yep. Pretty go pictures. Ahead. Did you drop? No. No, I didn't. I'm glad Good. we have, have all this time at a work session. Yeah, we have, we have worked with Sister Glendina Park for about two years now. Um, what would the downtown park do, sort of similar to Santa Fe? Another note that I really want to make. Uh, note of really passionately is Sister Blandina herself developing the first school system in the state of Colorado. And what an important historical factor that is for us. There's some hiccups Hold that. On, I'm in. Okay. We got duplicates on these. Yeah. So. Oh, they're both the same. So both, both the same. Both. Oh, they are? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. right. Okay. So having a park downtown is an asset. It's an asset just like um, the Purgatory River is, just like buildings that have been redone and people want to walk around. It's, you know, the city is partaked into space to create, but even, even the river is an asset. Anything that we can clean up our city that people want to come downtown, spend money, and spend time within the quarters of Trinidad is an asset to the city of Trinidad. Um, the the uh, chart that you have in front of you with the makeup of uh, the park is maybe somewhat different than you've seen in the past. So there has been morphing of different parts of the park in the last two years. We've worked with Tara and Jonathan and Greg. And now what we're trying to do is, it's a historical feature for our children to know. One of the things I always thought would be a really great thing is to have Sister Blandina's head on one of those, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, a wood stick or something. And as kids go, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so with, with, with our, our football team or our basketball team is winning, you know, because that is local historical prevalent so that we can go for Sister Blandina. If you can't take those tests for yourself, sometimes you take it for other people. Well, take it for Sister Blandina. Take your test better because she made the number one school system here in Trinidad. And in a way to thank her is come forward and do good. Make the kids proud of their heritage. 
And so the, the historical aspects of Sister Gladina, I think I would love for our local kids to always know. It is the first school district in the state of Colorado. And when you think of the vision of downtown and see, see how the park would look in the downtown area, how that makes you want to draw walking on down. If you're a guest in our city and you're coming down Commercial Street and you've passed <coughs> the Bank of the West, there's really nothing and you don't really know until you get another half block further. But to have the beautification, if you have a, you know, we're doing the space to create project and it's so wonderful and beautiful. And one of the reasons why it's wonderful and beautiful is from a guest perspective, as they used to walk in front of where space to create is now, you don't feel like staying in the community because it was all raggy. And it's the same thing with different pockets of the downtown corridor and the historic area and the economic development area of our town. So we really need to move forward and do something with the park. It can be done a couple different ways. And in this work session, we can work through, um, I understand that the, the, uh, the uh, contract that you guys got is, is off. Uh, I think there's some typographicals. It was never made as a hard piece. It was made as a, a, a something to work off of the contract for how this would work between um, Kip Hampton and the city of Trinidad. Um, but, you know, also, Sister Blandina, I mean, the moral character that she, she stood for. Um, there's just so much to be said about having the park downtown and named after her. Um, and again, like Gina said, it's all about community partnerships. It doesn't matter if we're here or we're in Denver. The way things really get done in any communities right now is with partnerships, Pri private public partnerships, partnerships between the community and um, and I think I'd like to really open up the floor to some questions <coughs> that we have answered that we went through our little work session before we came here too. So um, one part about the money is to ordinary apply for this grant. The grant would produce $350,000. There's also an extra $100,000 on the table from Kip Hampton for the building of the wall. And then the city's partake is only $5,000. Um, do we want to talk, talk about the what makes you most uncomfortable that you'd like to talk about first? Because I think I'd like to really work through all these well, issues. Yes. Well, I think we'll start with questions from council. And, okay. uh, Unless some yeah, I, some I, I think that's an interrupted kind of presentation. Go with your full thing and then we'll talk about it. I hate to get involved in a big discussion between you and us on what we know and there perhaps are more important issues coming after you. Right. Okay. Well, um, I, I mean, I can speak about how beneficial it would be on Commercial Street to have that. I can speak about why it's really historically wonderful for not only our local citizens. I mean, I'm amazed at how many kids still don't even know who Sister Gladina was or why our school bus is say the number one school district. Um, but um, I, I think it's really important that we get to the meat of it and we start talking about the lease itself. I think that's the most important. Yeah, I think also what the design in the park that you have there is bigger than the scope that we're talking about in the initial stages. Um, did, did we hand out, Gina, no. the, the uh, uh, It was in their packet. Yeah. Do you have the narrative in your packet? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. okay. If you go to the third page of the narrative. Uh, I'm, I'm Gary Fenneman. I'm Jay's operations manager. Um, I think I've met all of you in the past. But um, so this is a project we've talked to for, for quite a while, um, and it's kind of taken on some different versions, um, and I think you've probably seen that along the way. Um, what we're trying to accomplish here is establish a park <coughs> with some options in the future if the city chooses to add features along the way. So initially what we're talking about is um, we would contribute a hundred thousand dollars to the enterprise zone and that would be used to help build the entry feature from the wrap and wrap wall which you got the picture of right in front of you we've already built put in the um, the foundation so that that would be also a donation to the park but we would put in the hundred that should find most of the wall being installed we have that all in storage and it would look similar to the design that you have here. The balance of the park would come from GOCO funding. So there's the only, the only cost of the city is 
the uh, we asked they, Carl, I guess used to be and right to go co grant said that there's always a plus if there's a city private partner um, go co component. So we said it's the city at five thousand dollars in kind just stubbing in the utilities. That's the financial investment from that. The lease is only because uh, at one point we we're talking about donating it. The city, what we heard, was concerned that if we didn't get the grant, now the city has a, a lot that has no funding to turn into a park. So we went back to GoCo. GoCo said the option would be a, a lease. So the lease, I know, went to you, and it's a lot more onerous than it should be. So we're willing to cut and slice and dice. Because it was just a basic lease, guys. I mean, like, right. we were all embarrassed when we saw it, because yeah. we thought, what are you guys thinking? Yeah. So, so it was important to put that on the table. Yeah. So, so truly, what, what the lease is just to give an opportunity to send a go-go so that they can award a grant. Then if the city chooses to, they can continue the lease, or they say, great, and we have the money to do the part, why don't you donate it? And then we donate it, and all those contingencies and, and, go away. And so that lease, would it be the same lease that you see in front of you? All that all that landlord stuff was because it was a basic lease. So we all that we had just talked yeah. about can be all stretched out. That's so what are those essentials going in on the first phase of the part that we'd have the go-go grant for, right? So the the flower garden around the Sister Blandina statue, pretty small. Um, a small little water feature that, that is on those plans. Um, the entry feature, which primarily we would donate some money to the enterprise zone that would fund the wall. Uh, a playground for the kids. Um, fully saw the park so that it's not third. Um, and in that, the, it's designed with about a six degree slope on the south to the north. And that would function kind of like if you think of Fiddler's Green. Um, it'll fit 500 people in chairs or about 300 people on blankets. Um, and that would have a stage at the bottom. And that's where um, this came actually from Joe and John Terabino. They said, why don't we do a, in a park downtown where you could watch movies and music, which was something they had seen in Santa Fe. So um, I think Mike said you, got, you had a blow up uh, screen that's somewhere in storage um, that would sit on the stage and then on Saturday nights or whatever, the, whether it's through tourism or some other the, the arts and the, you know the downtown mm -hmm. groups show movies and have music in the park. So that's basically a concrete slab for the for the uh, for that setup. In a centralized location, I know years ago when we did Coal Miners Park, we thought we'd have more stuff in there. This park would be more open for more people to sit and be more, much more user friendly. So that's the extent of the request. Everything else that's on the plan would be a decision for the city if they chose to go forward with it. I know everybody said, is Jay going to come in and put your arm behind the back? And I made sure I talked to him over and over. So I said, once this is in the city's hand, that's their decision. This is all that we're saying as part of this we'd require. Grass it, put in a playground, you know, help us build the wall. Mm -hmm. And um, and do the the uh, stage. That's it. Other than that, what's on there on the plan? You'll see a pergola. When we tore down the Ku the Kui building, there's some really cool old beams that held the Kui building up. They're probably two feet by three feet old, hewn oak beams. Um, you'll see there's a pergola along the north wall which we thought would be a great place to have farmers markets and crafts fairs or whatever. So we have some beams that, you know, if you chose to, would be a really nice feature along that wall. Not required. Hard surface um, paths, you'll see those on there as well. Could be an all grass park, but eventually <coughs> it makes sense to have some pathways for people to walk in and, and 
you know, if it's rain, muddy, whatever, you know, they can still use the park. And these are things that were only um, driven by the architect giving ideas that are on there. It is only desires, it's not essential. And right. again, in that lease, all that verbiage that talks about landlord can be erased. Yep. Um, Main Street approved, and I put <coughs> some music art. It's in storage somewhere. Um, and we said it would be a great place to put it, is in the park, if, if, if you chose to. And then the last thing he, that we had on our plan is a gazebo that would just be like for having picnics. Um, again, not required, but down the road wouldn't be a bad feature to have. All of that could be, you know, from a future GoCo grant, a Dola grant, or, or don't put it in at all. Um, so there's no financial, other than the, the stubbing in the utilities, that there's a burden on the city. Now let's go to the lease. The, the purpose of the $3,500 lease says it's a month. It was supposed to be a year. It's $291 a month, and if we donated, that would go away. Um, the only reason for that, Tim, our attorney, felt that that was $0.10 cents an acre, uh, or excuse me, $0.10 cents a foot um, per month, or per year, $0.10 cents a foot per year. He felt that was a number that would make it a true lease instead of a, a dollar. Um, if that becomes an obstacle, you know, we'll take a flyer. We don't need the $291 a month. Um, if it was a dollar lease, um, we had asked if Les could look at that and see if, if um, that is a lease is a true lease. Um, it's Do you mean for tax purposes a true lease? <laughs> No, it's, Go -Co. it's for GoCo. GoCo okay. wants to know this is an issue. All right, because you're not depreciating stuff. No, so we're not so doing any of that. Sure yeah. that we just want to make sure that GoCo looks at it and says this yeah. is a real 20 year lease. And if you say a dollar, they may not. Okay, they may not meet their requirements. Yeah, we just want to bring stuff. Yeah, and then uh, and again, if the city chose to, let's say you got the money and you said, okay, we're, we don't want to do that anymore, just donate it. We're willing mm -hmm. to do that. Mm -hmm. So then there's no. Thirty-five hundred dollars a year. Um, it just we didn't want to. Been talking with everyone, you know, as well. But Greg, Bill, at one point with with Mike, they didn't <coughs> want to burden the city with a donation if there's no funding to build the park. Mm -hmm. So that that was right. a workaround. So that if the, if the GoCo grant isn't approved, it just falls back to Jay and and, uh, and he'll do something we'll do something program. else with it. Um, I mean, when you think of like the Chronicle News building and now there's somebody in there and that's been redone and the Purple Toad and the Toyota store and you think about how beautification of Mount Carmel is now the Champions building that's starting to have some tenants move in. All that economic diversity, if we can keep that going in Trinidad, and I don't think that this is a group that's ever really thought about um, not even part of their thing to take advantage of the city. It's all about the community and all about partnerships. And we're, we're just on this level with this piece of property that we're trying to move forward and make it more beautiful for downtown Trinidad too. And Tim will rewrite the lease to take yeah. out a lot of the yeah, it was a standard, standard lease verbiage that just basically is sitting there saying the only thing we're asking for are the essentials, um, which is the grass and those things. And, and doing and that there's no the other property. there's no other requirements on the part of the city to do more to the park than that. The problem that we have and we'll get to the rest of council here is that you know uh, from what I would like to see is, first of all, is the, the changes that have to be made with that lease mm -hmm. to show it. Yep. The other part of it that puts us in a real peculiar situation here is uh, this is due day after tomorrow, correct, the 28th? <coughs> 24th. 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 Thursday. 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 And we just uh, <laughs> we pretty much don't even have the time to come up with a resolution by that time for council to resolve yeah. that. So I right. and I feel awful so I don't know, about that. I, there's no way around that. I don't know. Uh, well, I feel Mike, awful what's your that. what's your thoughts? Well, that's exactly right. And we spoke before the meeting, and part of it is they they need a resolution. Goku needs a resolution from the the owner, the governing body, and also need uh, a parks narrative that we can get. But the lease has to be in place. So I don't know if GoCo will accept something that pending uh, 
approval we sign the lease i i know i feel <laughs> awful that it's late but i also feel awful that they've worked on this part for two years i feel awful that they've had sit down meetings numerous times with Tara, with greg that what we were told isn't really what you guys were told so i i think that i feel bad for all of you i also feel bad for the group being in on the group and hearing what they're saying and how hard they work and how many emails go back and forth that we haven't had this time so you know it's just a bad the only, the only press here is if we miss this date the next one is a year from now the next grant application mm -hmm. and then they approve it in march so we'd be looking you know building the park out in the summer of 20 21 so it's a long way to leave a, a dirt lot um, mm -hmm. we'd rather not so i mean one of the things we even thought is if tim can redraft the lease to something that you know you yeah, guys everybody, everybody are comfortable with then you know can you do a special session and you know, um, to, uh, you know, do yeah. a, uh, yeah, to, know. in order to get this through, it would have to be done by probably yeah. tomorrow. Tomorrow. Well, we'll after we'll have have to we have four we pages. One day to publish it. We've yeah. got four pages of events of default. That's not a standard lease, right. okay? It is the most, and it's very lesser onerous. Yeah. I don't know where you right. picked it up from, mm -hmm. but it exposes the city. I'm sorry, can I go ahead and leave? <laughs> sure. Okay. okay, it exposes the city to a lot of open ended liabilities. With my fiduciary responsibility to yeah. this community, I cannot vote to sign this lease. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not our job, yeah. the city councilman. I did this for a living professionally, yeah. but it's been 18 years since mm -hmm. I've done it. Very large scale commercial lease. This is not market. You're right. absolutely okay. right. So but I, I, in my right mind. Right. No, you're right. No, I so I'm so not. Right. You're right. So, anyway. so, you're right, Michelle. so again, the, the, all the way down, we had talked about one or two things: a land swap, which we decided doesn't make sense, and you know, we'll we'll work on a purchase of another parcel if it's possible. So then we said donation. And the only reason this lease even came up was because the, you know, there was a concern that if we donated to you, then you're, then you got a dirt lot in the middle of downtown. Yeah. So again, if Tim could rewrite the lease to take out the onerous part, um, we don't even have counsel. We don't have counsel that understands large, fairly large scale commercial leasing. Mm -hmm. I, market for that. This is I, I'll please speak to that. Sure. And I, I don't need to interrupt. And in a conversation that Michelle and I had earlier in the day, she asked me if I have really, you know, broad knowledge and experience in commercial leases, which I do not. But I would like to say that, you know, this agreement and the consideration notwithstanding, I do worry as a sham lease. Because if you're saying that, well, Go ahead and sign the lease, have a meeting, authorize counsel, sign the lease, and then later on, if you sign it, then maybe we'll simply convey it to you to get around all the inconveniences of the lease. Let's sign it now. Well, boy, that sure sounds like a sham lease to me. Yeah, no, if I could finish, please. And in this agreement, I mean, municipalities are in the business of establishing, operating, founding, creating municipal parks all the time. This lease agreement, let's say it's not a sham lease and you sign it and it stands, then you become a tenant for your own municipal park and they're the landlord. And all these things that are in here, you answer, I mean we, but you answer to them. And you as the tenant shall do all the things that the landlord dictates. And if you don't, then we have all the remedies and recourses of a landlord and we can do whatever we see fit to, to boot you out. I also want to say, and I'm sorry if I'm dominating the conversation or taking it too far, but I want to say it seems to me like the genesis of this was to make Kip Hampton in a position where they could get the GOCO grant. And all this is, it seems to me, again, just you know, trying to speak in plain terms, it seems to me like an end around to make a private developer eligible for a government grant. And everything about this, and I want to say the improvements, the oak beans, the gazebos, everything that everybody has ever done for everybody doesn't matter. It doesn't withstanding. In two years prior negotiations, doesn't matter. Or three days before, four days before, and this gives me heartburn when I read it. And, and I, you know, am asked to advise you guys 
and, and I, you know, with all due respect to everybody in the room and everything we're trying to do, this is a nightmare, and there is nothing good, there is nothing salvageable or okay about what you're being asked to do. So I don't have commercial lease experience, but I do have enough experience to tell you that this is uh, is horror on wheels mm -hmm. as your lawyer for all the things you're being asked there's, to do. There's something that I think about in order for us to even consider anything, we would have to have, uh, Tim, you'd have to have this in our hands by tomorrow morning. So, and, and, you know, yeah. and then we'd have to have, let's look at it, because mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much you will you guys could take out of it. I can do and, that. And then, yeah. and then for him to read it and see if it's even advisable for us to even have a special meeting, we would have to mm -hmm. schedule a meeting right. for Thursday morning sometime. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's the only thing, so the only way I could see it. Can I ask another, just a quick question, unless you might go do this, because our intent, our intent here is not what, you know, where it appeared there. So if it's, if it's legal, well, I don't know if it is, can we donate it like our intent was, and if you don't get the funding, it comes back to us? Is that legal? It's, we, it really is. Because then there's no strings attached. We're, we're that's what your, what's your thoughts there? My gut reaction is yes, mm -hmm. that's legal. Mm -hmm. And we're, see, again, that, mm -hmm. that was that conversation that I had initially with Alicia Hall, who's not an attorney, right? She said, this is the way we should go. But again, our intent is that if you have the money, we don't want to burden the city. Mm -hmm. It's not Jay Chimino trying to do an end around. We want to build, you know, we like to have it part downtown. If it's legal, right, Tim? I mean, if we can just donate it to the city, we're willing to do that, but we didn't want to do that and then have the city burden with a pad, with dirt. A pad of dirt if the go -Co grant doesn't go through. So if that's legal, we're willing to just say, we're, you know, we'll donate it to the yeah. city. This is, is not right? a money-making my understanding, is it my understanding here, you're asking us to sign this lease without a resolution being adopted by the city? Is that? No, we can't do that. No, we can't do that. No, because it has to have a resolution to go to go. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right, yeah. So again, if, if we could just donate it, and if the money doesn't come together, the donation is void. Is that legal? We would have to see some more serious documentation other than that. I mean, say if we do this and it, you donate it, and we sign off on that, and we're the tenant or the landlord of the property. Oh, no, 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 the owner. We don't own it. Exactly. We're the landlord of the property. We own the property. The city of Trinidad owns it. And then you're going to come in and you're going to get the contract to go forward with GOCO, I'm assuming, correct? Yeah. Well, the city, the city would apply for a GOCO it, grant. We, right. we would at be, that point, we have no... We would apply for it, but per the charter, if we're going to do any kind of construction, we have to put out an RFP. Yeah, right. Right. absolutely. Yeah, you, absolutely. Yeah, you, so just so you're aware that yeah, there may no, be a no, chance we, that we the captain doesn't get them. No, that's okay. We, we're not, we, we're we not, read we're that not, we were trying to we're do not it. Trying to, yeah. I mean, if we, we'd like a chance to bid on it, but if we can't, that's okay. If it's you tell us you can't even bid on it, we're still okay. How we're just trying to bring it, make yeah. a park. Yeah, how how that work. rumor got going that we were going to do the own work was because yeah. Greg actually asked us if we wanted to do the own work, and we said, well, okay, I guess we could put a bid out yeah. for it, but no yeah. way do we even want to. If we yeah. could give it all to you yeah. and, and get you the $350,000 and throw in another 100000 you guys can all have it. We just want it done nice and quick. So my other question is that when did you all kind of determined that this lease that you submitted to us on was it Friday when you got it, Mike? Yeah. The yes. attorney submitted it. We okay. Well, it. well, when it was submitted to us, when did you determine that this lease is not going to float? Uh, so, so, Tim wrote the lease based on what. This is my fault, to be honest with you, because I probably didn't sit with Tim long enough to say, "Here's the intent." So he wrote a kind of a standard <coughs> tenant lease. Our intent was to get a document that would allow us to apply for the GOCO grant. So again, the easiest thing is if we can do a straight up donation, um, if, if you guys agree, sure. and, then that, and then if the city says we don't want to donate it to us if we don't get the money, mm -hmm. and we write that in there, it just comes back to us because there's no funds. So. We're, we're trying to figure out a way to not miss this. $350,000. Grant time. Yeah. And uh, what is the time frame for um, 
receiving notice if you are the recipient, or we would be the recipient. March. Yes. March. 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 Yeah, March. It's, it's, it's horrible that you have to submit it now, and they don't tell you until March. March. No, that happens. That's just... <coughs> yeah. So, so again, yeah, we're not trying to no. press the city, or we're just don't, we, we would hate to, to have a really nice little park for the city. I think at this time, my personal feelings, I'm not sure what the council thinks, is that we let the two attorneys talk early tomorrow morning, I mean, if you guys want to look at the donation and you advise us on that, and if you think that we should have a special meeting, let's say uh, Wednesday morning or whatever, Thursday morning, uh, whatever soonest, yeah. I'm be not sure what council thinks about that. we got to check our schedules two, too. Yeah. Two things, so Thursday morning, four in the morning, I, I will leave, so I'll be out of town. But my other concern is we've been going through our preliminary budget concerns where we're at trying to balance a budget right now and we look at just the cost we eliminate the lease where we're going to need to come up with money just to complete what else is there is also a concern to me with the cuts that we're making in our budget with personnel and we're going to add more stuff on existing personnel to put in the park is also well, a slight yeah, concern to me. Sure. You know, I, I used to have a um, sign in my office that says, lack of planning on your part does not constitute an emergency on my part. And I think that's the situation you have gotten us in. But to be actually a good steward of the city's money, I can't see us taking over, even if you gave it to us, taking over this part when we have a La Puerta sewer line that we have to come across we don't have the staff right now to do a go program to fix this part. This, those buildings, sorry to say, have been there for several years in disrepair. Thank you for demolishing it. It was great, and I, I don't mean to sound not appreciative of what Kit Kat Hamden has done to Trinidad, but I don't think financially we can handle a project like this right now, and I don't think we have staff to do this project in such, such a short amount of time. So Karen, just for that, for the GOCO grant, so the same gal that I think you use, Alicia Hall, does it for us. So we've already paid Alicia to, or we're, we're willing to pay Alicia. She's written it, and we said it may not even be done. She's right, written the grant um, request, um, and she's just waiting to let us know if we're going to go forward. So there's no No, I, I understand cost. that, but you have to look. We're talking about how many years into the future. How many people will we have to employ to maintain that park in the future? That's going to be our responsibility. Our liability insurance increases because we have an extra parcel of land. I, you know, there's a lot of nice uh, features in this but we're, we have a homeless problem now. We're trying to figure out how we can get everybody to share Chimino Park equitably, and then you're going to put another piece of property right in the middle of Trinidad. I think a park would be great, but I don't think the city has the financial wherewithal to do this right now. And I and those are the other factors that I include in my decision. Mike, do you have an answer to that? Any answers to that? Any concerns or questions? Um, well, it's, it, if it's just sod, then, then it's just uh, putting it in the rotation of mowing. Um, but along with that comes all the fertilization and, and, sprinkler, and system. Of the sprinkler system and all that. You know, the initial cost is one time cost, but the ongoing, it, it would have to be built in. Yes. So, yes. I mean, you have $450,000 to work with the park on. But beyond that, and your your year would be, it'd be yours. And it'd be a, a huge asset for the city because it's commercial street property. Yeah, but look, look at where we're looking at. I'm not, I don't want to argue, but you've got to understand what we're looking at. If we have to hire one employee extra to the Parks and Rec Department, which is somewhat understaffed now. Mm -hmm. You're talking, what is the minimum wage for an entry level? 15 to 20,000 a year? Well, it, it'll be it'll be 50 to 60,000 by the time you pay all the benefits. Mm -hmm. Health oh, insurance is $2,200 a month for somebody with a family. Multiply that by 12. Mm -hmm. Multiply, multiply uh, contributing 
uh, Medicare and Social Security every month, Dad, as such. And we, I really don't think we're in a position to even maintain the parks that we have right now. We've got a little tweaks that we have to do to those parks, and I just, I can't see it, not in this critical stage of Trinidad's development. I appreciate it, and I appreciate what you do. Seriously, I'm not trying to be non-progressive, but just in my heart of hearts, I just don't think this is the time to do it. Anthony, you've been what? This is not the first time this degree of urgency has come before us. From, and it seems as though, as was earlier mentioned, there have been lengthy plans, a lengthy period of planning before we got here. Why is it that part of that planning didn't include better preparation for an agreement with us? And, and I too, as Karen has suggested, having been here my entire life, am very appreciative of all that the Chimino Group has done for our, our community. Mount Carmel in particular to my heart. And that many things significant in my life occurred in that church. But that having been said, sometimes I think that you are moving at such a faster pace that perhaps we are able to, by virtue of the limitations we have in finance and otherwise, that sometimes we become just a necessary cog in your wheels to accomplish what you're trying to do. You need this, you want this grant from GOCO, and I, I, I appreciate that, but you can't get it. You need us to get it. And, and it's frustrating to be here in a position to say, this is so exciting for a big missing tooth in the middle of commercial street. Mm -hmm. But are we biting off a whole lot more than we can chew? And rather than have it done right, I would rather have it not done at all. Um, this is sometimes, uh, the, this is like driving up on a 20 car wreck in a snowstorm. I, I, just, I, really, I just don't know where to start. You know, let me yeah. ask you, excuse me, one, one thing that I was just thinking about, Ed, and I'm not, I mean, this property has remained this way for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I've always said, if, you know, I like the project, don't get me wrong. I understand what Karen is saying and the concerns that everybody has. Now, what would be the urgency to actually do it this year, not just wait till we get a good plan together and we just wait another year? <laughs> I mean, I know you don't want to do that, but I think at the same time, you know, like everybody's saying, it's our fiduciary responsibility to make sure things will flow right for us. And I know Jay would like to get it done tomorrow if it's all possible, but I think it would give us uh, some time to, to look at it a little bit further down the road. I mean, that's this way it puts us in a little bit better time frame. Can I, you know, when I was looking at the, the lease when I bought it, because I was up the river this weekend, I didn't have. Wi-Fi up there, so mm -hmm. I couldn't really start reading it until today. Mm -hmm. And with what I do for the property management, I know when I have a commercial lease like this, I give our tenants the obligation or the opportunity to have at least a week just to look over and send it to their attorney. Right. Yeah, and so hang on, right. hang on, we need more time. Yeah. And and I think you guys understand that. To to put this on us with one day, pretty much. I mean, despite the weekend, but not everyone works on the weekends. That is. We can't do this in good faith to the community. I can't do this in good faith to the community. I am in favor of having a park. I think it's a wonderful idea. I think it'd be very beneficial for our community. It would fill a large, you know, mulatto part of the street. Sorry, speaking Spanish there, but it would. It, it, it really would. Yeah. So, yeah. Sure. I think we can eliminate the lease going this other direction. So I hate that to be the deal. Yeah, if we did the donation, then the lease is gone. Yeah. You know, I think what you're saying, Karen, is, is a valid thing. I think the city has to say they want to park. And if they don't want to park, then, as Gina said, you know, we'll, we'll develop it into something. Uh, you know, our intent has been a park all along. But sure. The pocket park the would look and, great. You know, yeah. It would we, look tremendous. This is a great looking graph. That's the lease. I think really the decision the city, and from my perspective, is is do you want to park and are you willing to maintain it? Because that's really the cost. So everything right. else is, is kind of going to be state money, Chimino money, and uh, donation. Yeah. So I'd like to go back to my original question a minute, my concern or question a minute ago is give us, even, let's not do it this year. If we have to wait another year, 
it gives us an opportunity to look through all the from A to Z during the next 12 months and, and make sure we're all comfortable with it. This way, give us time to apply for that work. Request. That's my personal feeling. I'll, I'll just add to that. First, I'll echo much of what these three have said, four have said. Um, I'm a rusty professional who doesn't have a law degree, but I'm sort of an armchair lawyer because I would negotiate these things on behalf of clients. Mm -hmm. And I've got four comments on each page, each of which require me to brush up and ask a leasing expert. I don't think this is a standard lease. I really don't. I've never seen four pages of default remedies in a lease like this. Open-ended? Open no, I, we, I, the space to create lease doesn't have four pages, and that's $19 million. Okay, um, I guess what I'm saying is I am uncomfortable just doing this on a lean and a prayer where, well, we're going to convey it to you and we're going to have some vaguely worded uh, resolution that goes to GOCO, and then you end up with a piece of property and a grant that you don't know what to do with because we're not good park developers. You guys are the good talk about it. So you put it out to bid, and then the bids all come in. Instead of it 455000 they now, well, it's, it's 355000 because your hundred would be out. Now suddenly we're facing a $600,000 project. We don't even know what's under the ground, do we? We don't know if there's ground field there. No, I think we've already addressed that. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know that. That's, that's, that's part of the 600. <laughs> I, I, should <laughs> by now. By now. I should by now. Yeah. So that's I'm going to urge that we do this in an orderly way. The city has gotten into trouble in the past by entering hastily into agreements that end up having big cost overruns. And I'm going to echo everything these other people have said. I really appreciate what you've done. I went on bus tour recently with a reporter from the LA Times side, hosted the thing. We had like 30 people on the bus. And it was amazing how much the Tominos have made a difference in our city. I just don't want to make this something that turns into a war between us. I'd rather have it so that we continue to be cooperative and we go into agreements with our eyes open. And we have had late agreements in the past. I think the last one was on the bid. And they said, if it happens again, I will vote against it. Now, I'm not going to vote against it. They're going to request that we wait for one year. So we have the Toyota agreement, which I, I changed my weekend travel plans because I didn't get it till Friday. Okay? And it was a horror show. And not one single page remained the same by the time we voted on it on Tuesday. I, I'm sort of tired of doing that. And so I just let, have let to me ask another question. question. If, if Jade agrees to wait, if he does, potentially, you know, we could still, since we're going to put the money into the enterprise zone, right, we could still probably do that and build the wall. We've talked the wall, right? Mm -hmm. So we could build the entry feature. If, if the council talked about a year from now, right, if you would let us know that you would back a park, if not, then the entry feature might not be the thing to put in if we're going to build a, you know, a warehouse. <coughs> you know, I don't know what it would be. Whatever it is. But if, you know, if we knew it would be a park, then maybe we could get the wall. That will kind of clean up the look from mm -hmm. commercial. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and then, you know, put the rest on. I don't know if Jay will do that, but put the rest on. Give us your thoughts. Well, my thoughts are... Um, I understand how you guys feel. I mean, we're moving fast. You want to make sure that the agreement that you're entering into is, is a reasonable agreement. We get that. Um, and I think if I were in your shoes, I would say the same thing, to be really honest. Um, we, um, we just really want to see this be a park. And I know what Gary is saying without saying it. Um, you know, Jay is very... Um, uh, agreeable to it being a park, but if he has to wait for a year, other private development things might come up. And I, I'm just being honest. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, 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 and I don't know what what the you know. I mean, I know we have options. That's we we just wanted that for the city. And I think what Gary's asking you guys, if I'm not if I'm reading into you, is I mean, if we can go back and say the city wants it to be a park. 
Um, but we're just down the wire and we can't make this work this year. Because we really do want to see this as a city asset. One, one other thing I want to mention too is that during this year of waiting, there may be some other opportunities to apply for additional monies, different monies, and build it all the way up. Right. So, or if you know, we need, we don't really know what the actual true costs are going to be from this, even the way it is here, just the basics. It will give us time to figure out exactly what those costs would be. If it's going to be the four hundred fifty thousand, even with what you guys are putting in, mm -hmm. or it's going to be less, or it's going to be more. And if it's going to be more, it'll give an opportunity to go out and try to search for additional funding yeah. if necessary. Yeah. So, and so, that's, so, so maybe Phil, what we could do is just so we we have a kind of a clear path forward is maybe in the next thirty days or something the council could talk about. Would you do a resolution that says we'd like to have the park, right? Um, given that Phil Long donates it, right? Kip Hamden or Kip Hamden donates it. And then we could maybe go forward and with that knowledge that that's an intent, you know, we could hopefully build out that wall, uh, which we're going to pay for anyway. anyway. Um, but then, you know, we know we're putting an asset in that's got a purpose, you know, down the road. And then, then like you said, maybe we look at Dola, maybe we look at, you know, Dola for part and then go go later, you know, something like right. that. But, but do it in stages. Go forward. But I think what council would have to do is say, hey, we want to park and yes, we're willing to maintain it and we'll do enough of, uh, what's it called? Uh, a resolution that mm -hmm. says, you know. So let's go ahead and do this final. Yeah, I was just saying, go ahead. I, yeah, I just ahead. wanted, I want to bring something to your attention because in a couple of weeks, there's an election. Three of these seats are going to be changed, possibly the fourth. So I, we can't guarantee anything that what we want to do because it's going to be up to the new council to do that, right? And another ancillary concern of that election is we are asking to extend our. Um, capital improvement project, money funding for that. And optimistic as I am, I hope that will continue. But if it doesn't, that's going to put a big hurt on my budget. To bring the this this would be a capital improvement project. That's sure. my point. Yeah, exactly. With that, it, with, with the successful completion of the election, we're in a better position to do it. But God yes. forbid that should fail. Uh, yeah, that's worry that's that they've heard on this. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's, uh, like I said, we'll probably go ahead and put this down as probably another uh, work session in the near future to have some additional discussion and of course mm -hmm. we might even have to wait until after the election so that we'll know mm -hmm. who is going to be on board and who's not going to be on board mm -hmm. and uh, uh, that's that's what I buy you really truly mm -hmm. believe that. and you guys can take that back to Jay and say for the reasons mm -hmm. that we brought up tonight that we would like to wait and uh, would 30 yeah. days work if we set this back to come back and yeah. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And I really want to say, first of all, you know, um, apologize that this is this way, but um, but in no way was this any sort of a developer's dream of making money or anything. This was because that GoPro grant was 350. He was willing to throw in another hundred, and, and and it was not about. And I don't know. This is Jay's real big dream. He'd like mm -hmm. to have this dedicated uh -huh. to Super Bowl. You know. Mm -hmm. And to your point about taking something back mm -hmm. and having mm -hmm. a commitment to a park, I know, I know, I know how well Kelly works mm -hmm. in some respects. Mm -hmm. um, he has a lot of creative ideas that early in the morning, and you guys make them happen. This is among the best, yes. yeah. so tell him that. Yeah. Yeah. But I won't commit that we want to. That general, we like want a park. I'm yes. only speaking yes. for myself. Yes. But yeah. let me say, if some of the, the ideas he has spoken about, this is probably one of the better ones. Second to lead him on the mm -hmm. in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Like I said, I think he wants to beautify the city. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, and Absolutely. You know, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Super. Beyond item two, the Monsanto Hospital Hospital funding request. 
I think everybody here knows you, but go ahead. And I'm, I'm Carolyn Johnson, and I'm going to defer to our CEO. So. Yes, I have this. You have that. <laughs> 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 Good evening, Mayor and Council. We appreciate the opportunity to just take a few minutes to talk about our hospital construction project. I know we've been here a couple times before, but just to recap, uh, we're excited about our construction project. It's well on, well on its way. If you've not been out at the hospital recently, um, we, we've got a, approximately 30,000 square feet of new space at the hospital. It really replaces all the patient care spaces at the hospital, which is what our priority was. Um, so a new emergency department on the first floor here, new inpatient unit up above. This is if you're looking at the front of the hospital. And then if you can imagine you're standing on Dr. Doden's roof, looking back west, um, the emergency department, there's an ambulance canopy created by the inpatient unit up above. We com combine all of our imaging services in this building right here that are currently sort of scattered throughout the hospital, and one of them's in a trailer out behind. And then this is just the central utility plant that houses all the mechanicals for that new space, so we're really excited about that. Um, so we're in the midst of a, about a $3 million capital campaign. We're looking for partners in our community to help support this project, but given the last discussion, we want to be sensitive to, to this ask and timings, and so I guess at this point, we just want your input about when we, want, when we come make an ask, what is the appropriate time period to do that with budget cycles and, and new council members and um, post-election? What could you advise us on how we ought to plan to do that at some point in the future? Probably because this is not a, a capital improvement project for the city itself, and right. it is part of the city. You'll probably have to come from funding, probably from our marijuana. That's probably where we have to come from for any consideration. And that is done on a quarterly basis. Okay. Uh, so uh, we have one coming up here shortly. Uh, so it will probably not be done this time around, but maybe in the next, that would be the first quarter, quarter one, which we would consider probably the uh, late January or February. Okay. So that would be probably be the time frame. Okay. So your so the city's fourth quarter, which is April to to June. No, no, no. Fourth quarter is actually a, it's like the calendar year. Okay, yes. October. Yes. Right. October is yeah. and then we would have the that coming from us probably in uh, either late January or early February. Like okay. okay. And then I have a question: are, Is Mount Saint Raphael a nonprofit or for profit entity? We are. We're a nonprofit. The the nonprofit is called Trinidad Area Health Association. We're a five hundred one c three. So that would make it eligible for marijuana. Mm -hmm. You might want to talk with Mike or Audra or someone on staff and understand okay. the limitations yeah. that we've imposed right. on the marijuana money, and they've gotten a lot tighter over time. Okay. Um, We're sorry to hear that. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> we are too, because we're just being realistic about the right. fact that we may not be the only game in the Southwest. So. Right. Okay. I have one more question. Um, what exactly, if it was a perfect world, what would you have been asking for us at the seat? Well, so we're asking for people to consider a five-year commitment. Our, our capital pain campaign is five years long, so we think that makes it a little bit more palatable for folks. We weren't sure what to ask. We thought maybe five $100,000 donations. And we couldn't do that uh, for, because we couldn't commit other right. accounts of that. Right. So we would probably need a one-year commitment for right. that dollar. Right, and then we come back for future subsequent years. It's been a long time since someone got $100,000. Okay. Well, there's, there's a first time for everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, we do have an ordinance right now that states that nonprofits that come for these requesting dollars can only get up to $25,000, and that's over a three year period. Right. Uh, so, just so you're aware, that's an ordinance that we've been focused okay. on ourselves. Okay. So well, we'll get that information from Mike and or Audra and be prepared to come back at a future date. Okay. Not, not uh, to offer any false encouragement. I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> we repeatedly talk about new people visiting our community and thinking of moving here, and the questions mm -hmm. always raised are mm -hmm. health and education. Mm -hmm. You bet. Now, while this is a nonprofit, unique, it's a unique nonprofit. It's a significant nonprofit. It's an important nonprofit in the overall scheme of economic development. And um, 
I guess the bottom line it has a special place in my heart with all due respect to the other no no I, I couldn't agree with you more on that I'm just saying we may be in different solar systems right. so right. the dollar. Yeah. well there's also a health care district organized in our community and that that currently operates without any funding so would a would a, a request from the district be more appropriate or I don't think it matters no. I come okay. back from you I think right. that's yeah. Okay. And then you know, there are those actions that are a distraction from health care. Right. And uh, that too is a reality of life. We've had a few of those lately. Yeah. <laughs> I really want to commend you and you know, the board of directors for what you've done and what you're doing for the community. I mean, this is quite a project. And you know, that's something that the community has been wanting to see is you know, better medical mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. reaching out to the community and saying this is what we need. Yeah. I want to commend you for uh, what you are doing. This is truly an asset for the entire area. We would love to tour any of you, all of you, um, through the facility as it is today, or the, the construction process mm -hmm. as it is today. It's just mind-boggling to see. I mean, I'm sure you've all seen the um, emergency room that we currently have. Right. What we are going to have for an emergency room is just absolutely amazing. So, so this lab would, has been poured for right. a couple of weeks. They're going to start hanging the structural steel right. next week, and that will be done mid-December, uh, hope if everything goes to plan. And so the building is really going to start to take shape. We're excited about it. And I, I probably mentioned here before, but this is really the first significant improvements to our hospital since it was new in 1972. So it's so a long overdue. And before that, <coughs> Rico, Karen, and I were born in the old hospital. <laughs> 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 yes. Maybe no, I don't know. Well, I, was I, was there. <laughs> I was born at home, so. <laughs> 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 you know, but I would like to do it maybe periodically, you know, because I know. What's the time frame for your completion on the project? So our, our scheduled occupancy date is October, early October of next year, but our contractors are currently a few weeks ahead of schedule, so we're hoping that they can retain that and, and maybe we get in in mid-September. Well, sometime maybe... Don't hold me to that. First quarter, well, sometime, of course, you might come with a request. Uh, just keep us up to date. That's okay. How, yeah, sure how, how the progress is. Yeah. Yeah. sure will. And yeah. I'll echo some of what Anthony said. Please call on me as a contributor. I think it's the most important project that's going on in the city. Yeah. Okay, Other than thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Speak, but it's right, right. up there. Right. Top, I agree. Top yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so right. much. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 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 Item number three, the Space to Create Advisory Panel Report. Who is here to present? Meryl. She's Meryl. back. Meryl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not asking for any money. <laughs> if you have a mind to, though, we're certainly accepting of that sort of thing. Um, so this evening I have um, our final report from the uh, Space to Create Commons Advisory Panel. We met four times, and public would like to thank all of those who took part, um, whether they attended all of the meetings, some of the meetings, or even offered information and data and such that, that helped us um, put this final report together. Um, you all have copies of this. Um, I think the four points um, for core deliverables are important. Um, uh, we want the commons to act as a key catalyst for economic development and diversification of area economy. The commons should endeavor to break even which is highly important and sought after. Um, we got from ArtSpace just an estimated $10,000 per month to operate the facility. That could be lower. The way they put it, it was um, probably on the higher side. So it could be less than that. That will be reevaluated um, maybe every six months and just see where things fall in place. So that could drop if that's what we uh, were working on. Um, should serve to enhance community cohesion by providing a place for um, informal public gatherings. So um, we want it to be open and available to the community just to come in and hang out and talk and have conversation and um, scheduled meetings and non-scheduled gatherings and such so that it's utilized by the community in, in that way. 
Uh, we wanted also to draw visitors uh, from outside of Trinidad to um, our community, and that certainly will help improve income from those tourists um, who, who visit. Um, the three buildings, the Franch, the Toller, and the Aiello make up the Main Street portion of um, the space to create, as you all well know. Um, we're pretty limited in some things. The, if there's a kitchen area, for example, um, that needs to be in a, in a space where there's only a single floor, and that's, that's one area of the Toller or the Aiello building. Um, the bathrooms need to be located where there's basement underneath it so that plumbing can be easily run. Um, the uh, back side of the Aiello building has a large glass window that we'd like to maintain and have that available for um, extra outside seating and such. That's, they're going to remove the, the driveway and the ramp that goes into the garage area of the toller and turn that area into a grassy area that can be used by both the residents um, in the live workspace and those using the commons. Um, we'll probably have to add an egress location in the garage so that we can anticipate utilizing the space by more than, I don't know, pick a number, 50 people, 75 people. Um, so we've discussed that with um, current architects HHL. Um, HVAC, according to Mike, is part of uh, the funding um, expenditures that are already in place. So we'll have um, HVAC and then also sprinkling is included currently in that uh, uh, figure as well. Um, historic preservation guidelines, which you have a copy of, there are certain things that cannot take place within this uh, location. Um, that's a pretty lengthy list, but it's pretty common sense also. Um, so I think that covers that pretty well. Um, priorities of use, active high traffic, engaging for locals, especially families, provide much needed indoor space for planned and informal community gatherings, and the design should be flexible. You know, we talked a lot about how do we divide the space out? And it was pretty well um, decided that instead of having office areas with walls and things that were set, you know, we don't know in five years if the same people who might become tenants in the commons will still be around in five years or perhaps need twice the space that they had for the first three years or whatever. So we want to keep it as open as possible with flexible walls and flexible use um, abilities. So, um, you know, that way we can have a music event with a stage at the entry <coughs> of the Toller <coughs> building, for example. Um, the only real space that's set now is the Creative District offices and um, Economic Development office and um, that will be on the western side of the Franch building, and that will be ready for occupancy when the live workspace is on. Uh, the economic development office is not yet in, I mean, that's what you guys want, but I'm not sure if that's what you say. Right, yeah, exactly. But that's an opportunity, right. certainly, that, you know, where people can come into one location and they can find out all sorts of information. Um, economic development, new business startup, that sort of um, thing. Um, perhaps a shared workspace within that office area too. It's long and narrow, so we can easily break that up into three <coughs> segments, as it were, um, to provide that kind of space as well. Um, the front of the toller is, of course, um, going to keep the uh, garage door, overhead door, so that can be opened up for that entertainment district. Um, that can be an indoor-outdoor space almost. Um, and that area, because of the setback of the toller, you know, that's a perfect place too for outdoor entertainment or whatever. So um, that's kind of where we've been with all of this. Um, we felt that um, it is really important to have some sort of food services within the commons, um, just to add another location 
to eat well in Trinidad. So that's something that we definitely have been looking at. That, that could be as small as a catering kitchen, or it could be a full service um, training kitchen, have visiting chefs come in and teach various methods of cooking and such. Um, it could be attached to a restaurant or cafe within that area. But again, these are things that will come as we determine more of, of what the community wants and how the community might like for this area to be used. Um, one thing that's important, the, uh, we were told by Art Space because of historic tax credits and because of some of the funding mechanisms, they are not able to sell the goods that might be produced in the studios of the live work areas. Um, so it has to simply be residential and that's all. So that's an opportunity that we saw for the commons area. There could be a gallery space or um, a retail space that would sell those products that uh, residents would produce. So that's something that we looked at. We've talked to the college about um, perhaps having some sort of um, uh, agreement with them, whether it be the heritage school classes, whether it be um, a student run portion of that space, um, any number of things that we could partner with the college um, to put um, a retail space or office space in. Um, we, there were three areas recommended by HHL, the architect, for the front of the Aiello building. But with retail spaces available in Trinidad currently, uh, we didn't feel that that was really appropriate to set those as absolutes. We'd rather have it open into the commons and then be able to, down the road, construct walls if that's the way it seems to go. Um, so we're kind of hesitant to recommend that, that something permanent um, be put in place. Basically, we want to keep it as flexible and open a space as we possibly can. And it's a lot of space. It's 20,000 square feet in the entire commons and 8,400 square feet in the, the garage area. You know, it's really important that we make certain, number one, that it can pay for itself. And number two, that as many people as possible within the community might have access to it and be able to use it in various, various ways. So the flexibility was, was really important to the uh, panel. Um, small increments of space, movable walls, multiple uses, uh, workshops, retail community meetings, that sort of thing. Um, Pop-up retail, uh, bull carts, kiosks, um, you know, short-term temporary <coughs> use uh, by businesses and entrepreneurs. Um, it's easier for someone to decide here's a business that I'd like to start and maybe rent for $100 a month an area and see how that works and then look at something more permanent. It might not even be in, in the commons area that the, that permanent space uh, falls into place for them, but you know they can kind of test out and try various ideas uh, without spending an arm and a leg or signing a you know, long-term lease uh, within Trinidad. So lots of opportunity, again, for entrepreneurs and new business startups and such. Um, we had two proposals that came in for the use of the garage area, one um, that you're familiar with, the Dome Zone counterculture experience, and then another for Family Entertainment Center. Um, so they came to the panel rather than the other way around, and we think that it's important that the city have the opportunity that we put out a call for proposals and get other ideas for things that uh, people might want to do in that space. You know, there was a lot of talk of, um, you know, what to do there, and I think it's just too early at this point in time to try and determine what will happen to that space. So, um, Wally Wallace has been um, vital in this planning. Um, Doug Peters, or, uh, Jeff Peterson has also been vital in this planning process. Um, we're looking now at grants. We have a list of about 15 grants that could very possibly apply for, um, for this commons build out. So we're looking at getting a list of those grants and what kinds of things they fund. 
and deadlines for application and that sort of thing. So that's one stage that we're working on right now. Uh, we'll be putting together a news release with this information once City Council approves the report. Um, I think it was determined, and correct me if I'm mistaken, that the CIP funds could be yes. used for... I, I reconfirmed that with us today. Okay, we thank added, you. Uh, yes. Yes. That's not right. Okay, then it's his fault. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So that's something that certainly could be looked at as well. Um, there is a $300,000 opportunity with the state of Colorado. Um, they would like to be last in, however, so we're looking for additional opportunities for funding um, prior to going to the state again, but that's um, something that certainly could be. Which state agency is that? It's through um, OEDIT, um, Office of Economic Development. Um, and um, Mike has been checking also to you know, get a, a line by line um, number for various grants and opportunities that we currently have just to make sure that we all know that everyone knows exactly where the money is that's been um, uh, you know put toward the space to create project in general and in particularly in particular the commons uh, we've hired a graphic design person um, to do a logo for the commons <coughs> and we've had some um, samples sent to us and we're going to be working with uh, that person to come up with some specifics. That would be used for local marketing, uh, for lease up, um, along with ArtSpace. ArtSpace wants to work with us to market and do the lease up for both the live work area and the commons pretty much simultaneously so that it's one huge project and this is what we're doing with these two parts instead of doing it piecemeal. Um, so ArtSpace has been good about uh, working with us in that respect. Um, so, you know, we'd, we'd like to have one heck of a sweat <coughs> party when this all opens and there's a ribbon cutting <coughs> next summer and everything sounds like it's still on schedule for midsummer of next year, uh, again, both for live work and for the commons area. So um, that's our report. Questions? <laughs> it sounds like it's coming along really nicely. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks to the city for all of all of your work and effort too. And and also, um, I think we have the seventh person seated now um, as of what Tuesday last Tuesday for the Space to Create Commons Oversight Board, which will be a city board. So we'll be scheduling the meeting with that here very shortly. And at that point in time, it will it will go from this advisory panel to that board um, for continued oversight and, and planning and such. <clears throat> well, first of all, my compliments, a highly professional job. I've been involved in creative district and space mm -hmm. but I stepped out for this. I thought it was good that you guys build something organically that didn't have me voting on what you're proposing. Um, I really like what I see. I'm glad I did that. Uh, I'm glad you did all that work for me. <laughs> <laughs> that was the um, real purpose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just have one question for mm -hmm. you. Um, the facades. I see there's a lot of facade work going on right now, and which is really, that's got to be exciting for everyone. Yeah. Right now. Um, but it says on page two, historic preservation guidelines require that all facades be restored to original building styles. Um, I, none of those buildings will look the same. And the, the renderings I've seen have sort of a unified look. Well. Or less, less style is a much, yeah, and, and much more liberal definition then yeah and I, I can't really, yeah I can't really speak to that specifically Michelle because I don't know what their guidelines are as far as what you can and cannot accomplish yeah. but I don't think there's much change um, 
I know. renderings, right? Right. Uh -huh. and, uh, and you and I worked together on putting together the ordinance for Correct. historic preservation. Uh -huh. And I remember going through all the permitted uses and things like that. Uh -huh. we, we spent a lot of time on that. We tried to make it as liberal as possible. I hope we don't get stuck with a French, a yellow, and a uh, taller you know, amalgam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I. It doesn't I, look like we are, but I, this is a early stage. For yeah, I work. don't think so. But again, mm -hmm. I, I really am not in a position to speak directly to that. So right. that's that's absolutely something that we need to yeah. find out more about, and right. as far as details and such, because even you know we've even had different renderings from start to finish, and we've had a but number of five iterations for they're floor plans right. and. Yeah. All of that, but right. yeah, yeah. But I think that needs to be clarified. Well, so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so sorry. one of the grants uh, mm -hmm. research was uh, historic Colorado historical grant, and there is someone overseeing that portion of the grant from the oh, state right. historic so that build up yes. I understand. It's not yeah, the so up. there it's not the turn down local no no no, no it's, it's not no it's at the so state level yeah. they're they're making sure that everything's done correctly to the yeah. standards that they I'm not sure I've seen the renderings you speak of and I'm not I've got to go back and look and okay. maybe give you an answer but uh, we're kind of locked into that grant and those guidelines. Yeah. And that's through historical funds, right? Yes. That District Colorado. Yes. Yeah. All right, just one other comment. Um, the retail space, he's mentioned it's a problem for the historical preservation credits. It's a huge problem for the low-income housing tax credits, which are, would bring down the, I mean, we just can't do that. The right, retail right. space mixed in with the residential. But the commons is able to do that. The commons is able. Correct. It's not correct. A but but they can't use any of the art space owned. No, it would be portion of the, exactly. The, yeah, the, yeah. The immediately. Very valuable low income, federal right. Low income but again, that's right. an opportunity for the commons. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, right. to to bring some that's, income yeah, because exactly. these will be people perhaps making things that they'd like to sell. I locally. think the result so, is a good one. I agree. Yeah. And uh, again, I'll just say I thought this was very thoughtful, and I commend the committee. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Excellent work. Thank you so much for Thank your you. time. Thank you. Appreciate I'm, it. I'm the same way. Thank you, Marilyn, so much. You bet. And it's not me. It's <coughs> yeah, well, I mean, I figure you will convey that to the I will most that goes to No, I'm just going to keep it and take it home. Believe me, it's like when everyone <laughs> come to me at the Blues Fest for all the years I was part of that. Oh, you work so hard, you do everything. No, it takes, it takes a, a, a large crew people. to put that on. I, I know exactly what you Yeah, mean. exactly. Thank yeah. you all very much. You've Thank done you a tremendous you. amount of work on this, and I myself appreciate the work you do. I do have a, a couple of things for you. Uh, you have meetings, scheduled meetings. Are they being advertised? Well, we haven't as yet. I mean, the the, um, the advisory panel meetings were advertised. They're posted. Yeah, everything was posted for those. How and often have, are they? Well, we had four of them because we wanted to keep that at a minimum because the length of this advisory panel was limited to this initial planning stage. So we have held the last of those. And then once we hold the initial meeting for um, the Space to Create Commons Oversight Board, which is a city board um, uh, that an ordinance has been um, uh, uh, signed for, um, then those certainly will be will be posted as well. The other thing I was wondering, because you know, I'm sure that there might there might be other people in the community or the area that might have some suggestions, and I think that mm -hmm. there's a way to put it out on multimedia to be able to say, I've got a suggestion, where can I contact mm -hmm. you? Yeah, I think you might try to do something like that. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a first meeting for just that kind of um, event still on the 5th of November. Art Space will be here, and it will be informational in, in many uh, ways. It will be probably the first time mm -hmm. that it will be explained when and how people can apply for the residencies and also <coughs> for commons. Um, so that's kind of what we're working up right now. Again, we want to do a press release here very shortly that will get that information out and then start holding public meetings as we did early on, um, you know, when this project first got started. The, uh, you were talking about the, some of the 
non-common area or in retail area mm -hmm. uh, products that can be produced and sold that are in the area. Now, is that just Trinidad or can that be Los Angeles County? You know, it's really interesting. There's a there's a store in Denver. It's called I Heart uh, Denver Store, and it started out with just items that were produced in Denver, and now it's all over Colorado. So we don't know exactly what that might start as and what it might finish as, but there are so many home-based businesses in Trinidad and small um, producers of all sorts of things, you know, whether it's soap or lotion or pick something. Um, I just don't want you guys to have to limit yourself to stuff oh. that's just produced here in town. No, uh, no, no. No, I don't think it will be. It, it's kind of like our creative district. You know, we have an outline that's, same, that's the same as the historic district, but we look at that as kind of the center of the wheel and then the spokes radiate out from that. So no, we certainly don't want to limit, um, you know, to a, a specific geographical sure. area. Uh, the last question I had is, uh, you know, you're going to put out RFPs for usage of the space. Now, are you going to do an RFP outside of Trinidad as well as, like, um, you what's, know, what's going to be a reach? Yeah, I'm not really sure about that. Um, and I don't, I don't know how it fits with an RFP anyway. It, you know, a call for proposals or, you know, at some point I'm sure there will be RFP, but I don't, I really don't know. I can't, I can't answer or that right now. release of, you know, some of the Yeah, property. yeah. Um, probably farther than Trinidad. I mean, Artspace um, recommended that we go 50 miles out when we did the marketing survey. Eh you know, cows and grass. So we went a whole lot farther than that. And we, we came in with 616 respondents, responses, um, and they had anticipated 200 being a great, um, you know, response from that. So we want this to be successful. We want to bring in income. We want it to be an economic development tool. So the suggestion there that there's something you have to check with being that they're in the marketing Mm -hmm. tourism. If, you know, to be able to market those spaces Absolutely. out, you know, they might they might be able to uh, give money to the project mm -hmm. to market outside it because they want to market Absolutely. It further, uh, and further you know, further areas. So I mean it's multi purpose. You know, we certainly want to provide as much as possible for the community, but we also want to bring those tourist dollars in. So I think that we'll have a dual um, goal as far as our marketing is concerned. But I'm saying you might have to reach out further to try to get people to come in to set up shop. Oh, absolutely. And that's what yeah. I think maybe could that be part of the marketing mechanism. Certainly. And that's why we want this to be as flexible and open as possible right now. Those are the recommendations because we don't want to build 10, 500 square foot, you know, retail spaces have free people come in who want that and you know nobody else does and then that could change um, in a year or two and even art space suggested they said whatever you plan for it will probably in five years be completely different than that anyway so we want it we recommend that that be done very gradually so that we really have you know a good planning opportunity and we don't end up with spaces that are never used Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Marilyn. Job well done. Thank you all. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good score. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Monday night. Yeah, it is. <laughs> On item five, item four, <laughs> monument late report. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Council members. Um, I do have uh, some paperwork to hand out to y'all. Excellent. Um, I was right. unaware that I needed to get this in on Friday for you and also work on the weekend, so that's why we're doing it right now. <coughs> Um, I mistakenly uh, 
thought that the plan of operation was, was, was the same thing as our operating, the operating plan was the same as the operating agreement. And so you probably didn't see one of these plans of operation for 2019. That's my fault. I didn't, I, again, uh, was confused as an operation plan and operation agreement. And so that's why you didn't get one for 2019. Um, as you uh, go through, this is a, a obligation that we have uh, with you guys in our lease and contract. So this is why you're seeing the things that you're seeing. Um, <clears throat> when you come under the services offered, um, these are the services that we offer to uh, the patrons of Monument Lake Resort. There's Walgreens, Cabins, RV sites as you're going through these things. Um, that would be on page four and uh, page five. Um, it gives current pricing for the 2018-2019 seasons and then uh, what we're uh, looking to do for the 2020 season. So that there are going to be some uh, daily rates that are going to be increased. Um, most of them are going to be about for uh, ten dollars. Uh, about is what the increase is going to be on the cabins and, and the lot of trees and so forth. And uh, I believe that that we're still going to be well under uh, a lot of the competition around um, for the, the amount of money that we're charging for the services. And uh, I've looked in and. Um, for instance, uh, you know, on the, on the, on the dry camping and, and so forth, the, the, the daily passes to, to get into the lake. And uh, what I've done is kind of gone to Trinidad State uh, Park and um, the Warfano County Park in, in Warfano. <coughs> and um, I've gotten their price sheets and looked at over those. And, and I think, again, we're going to be uh, underneath those, but I, I believe it's time for, to kind of up the game here just a little. Um, as we uh, progress through the operation plan, um, there's a security and protection and evacuation plan. Um, in your packet, um, the emergency evacuation plan is right after the exhibit. And uh, again, I'm contractually bound to you guys to uh, supply that for you. Uh, security and protection of the park. Uh, um, I hired a, a, a position is currently staffed by a 27-year uh, retired uh, police officer from, from Denver. Um, he was great um, to have him on staff this year. Um, he took care of several problems um, with you know, people maybe getting a little too loud, partying a little too much, and, and doing that kind of stuff. Um, he, was, he was on target as far as keeping the, the speed of the patrons down. I tried to put some 50 mile an hour speed limit signs around the resort, and uh, he was very good at, at getting people to, to slow down and uh, be safe uh, at the park. So, um, um, as, we, as we progress to uh, page eight, we look at the capital improvement needs of Monument Lake Resort. Um, there, there is one. Uh, I don't know if this is going to fall under this capital improvement needs or not, but it's, it's the very first thing that, that you're going to see. Uh, and, and what it's saying is that during the 2019 season, upon opening, um, I discovered that there was a, some advanced damage to a cabin uh, that took place over um, the winter time. And uh, if, if you all can uh, look at your exhibits and look at exhibit one, uh, the, the top two uh, pictures show um, the damage that was created um, by the severe winters and so forth. Now, let me let me say this to you: When I took this over in 2018, this building looked just like that, and I tried to patch it. I tried to put stuff in it. I tried to do everything I could to to, to not let this happen, but it, it, it did. And uh, it ended up, as, as you can see on the bottom two pictures, a, a wall fell in on the inside of the building. Um, if you turn uh, exhibit one over to the back side, you'll see two more pictures uh, of kind of what happened uh, over the winter. So what happened with this per particular cabin is that uh, Mr. Tom Beach was up at the place and I had him look at it when we were trying to get the bathroom facility going. 
and uh, he said, hey, you, you, know, you probably need to uh, let Mr. Sun know and uh, get three bids on this thing and, and go forward on it. And so that's what I did. And, and uh, two of the three bids, I couldn't get anybody to, to, to bid on the thing or to go up there and do anything with it. And so um, I decided that, that Mr. Guzman was uh, was probably the guy for the job. He's, he's a very uh, well-known stucco person in the area. He's been here for a long time. I don't know if everybody knows him as well, though. And uh, he, he does a lot of stuff around here. So I, I uh, summoned Mr. Guzman up to look at the thing. And uh, this was on a Friday, I believe. And so uh, he gave me a price, and, and, and he looked at it, and he said, yeah, we could do this project. Um, Sunday, he calls me, and he says, look, I'm going to be gone for about six weeks. If you want me to do this project, we're going to have to start tomorrow morning. And so <coughs> we, we, would have, we would have seriously have lost this cabinet if I wouldn't have done what I did, and I, I hired him. And, uh, and uh, so what, what, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm requesting, uh, and I've got the invoice and so forth, and uh, I'm, I'm requesting that you reimburse me for the $3,200. You have the actual bill from him, correct? Not just an ambulance? It was, uh, yes, sir. It's a. Uh, okay, I see. You see, I think. Is that the cabin in exhibit two there, too? Is that, is that a different one, right? Um, is that the one I stood in? I hope it was a doubt. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Here, uh, we'll get you exhibit two here oh, in just okay. a little while. It's, uh, those are improvements we're doing to, oh, okay. to the cabins. But, uh, I don't so mean to, to interrupt, but I feel I need to. Um, part of the agreement is to have the operational plan submitted to the city manager and these type of things. And I don't know if you did to the to Greg, you know, after the fact it's okay, but I'm sitting here listening and the council is privy to all this, but you should have brought one for us too. So no, when you're uh, done, I'm going to need a copy. No, no, yeah, no. Sure. Um, but um, these things we could have worked out as they as they occurred rather than you coming and asking for reimbursement yeah. after the fact. So, okay. Well, sorry. Good sure. Good job. So, um, as we run down for capital improvements, number one, um, replacement of the deck outside the lounge. Um, this is a small deck that's, that's approximately 10 by 16. Um, what I'm seeing on this deck is a, a lot of uh, the wood is rotten. It's, it's to the point where it's probably a public safety hazard. Um, I can't do too much about rotten boards. It's not really a maintenance or a repair issue. Um, I believe it's at the end of its service life. And, and there could be some possible structural damage underneath some of the, the, the larger boards that go across. Um, I didn't pull anything off and get into that kind of stuff, but uh, I, I do believe that that's going to um, be need to be replaced. Um, second is a replacement of the fish cleaning station. The fish cleaning station um, is currently 31 years old and uh, starting to really show some wear. Um, there, there's, a, there's a lot of things in there that are um, just kind of part of the main unit that are just really starting to show some wear. Uh, we put grease in that thing probably at least once a week, sometimes more, and, and everything is, it is so wide that, that you can't already keep greasing it. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, there are just a, a ton of issues with, with that, that, that fish cleaning station, electrical system, um, macerator unit, uh, so forth. So just to let you know about that fish cleaning station, it, it's, it's pretty old, like say 31 years. Um, number three is a uh, request to the renovation of the old bathhouse to be utilized as a community hall or, or an event center. Um, this is the building that, that you thought about maybe tearing down and uh, the building's in good shape. It's got electrical, it's got water, it's got sewer, the roof's okay on it. Um, I was up on the roof this summer and, and uh, did a little bit of maintenance on the roof uh, here and there, but it, it's a good building. And uh, I, I do believe that uh, 
that we could turn it into something nice for, for a community hall and event center. Uh, I think that we could use um, you know, more of the uh, 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 things that the community needs for to, to have this hall in there. Um, like, like when you can have wedding receptions, you can have conferences, um, you can have uh, class reunions and, and uh, family reunions and, and different things like this. And I, I just think it'd be a, a, something that we could definitely consider doing. Um, number four is the installation of a hand washing sink in the lounge. Um, the local health inspector uh, visited the facility this year and uh, found that uh, we were, in, in, were not in compliance, uh, that we did not have a hand washing sink in the lounge. And it's something that uh, they do require to have. So um, she wanted us to have it before the start of the 2020 season. And it, it, it's not gonna take much, it's just a, just a hand washing sink. All the, all the plumbing's there, it's, it, it's all there. Um, in the lounge there, there are three sinks that are together, but these are used for uh, washing glasses and so forth. But you have to have a separate hand washing sink in order for it to be compliant. Um, number five is uh, some road base and gravel for for the area. Um, I'm looking at about maybe 300 tons of road base, about 100 tons of inch and a half screen rock. Um, I'm willing to do the work on this. I just need a stockpile so I can get to it. Um, this is going to help us uh, level some of the RV spots and uh, also. Uh, do some of the, the, the road that needs to be done. Um, we'll never do this in, 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 with, with 300 tons of material. I mean, you're thousands and thousands of tons of material to do the whole thing, but I figured if we start on it now, we can kind of do it a little bit every year and uh, take different sections of the road and try to do something with them. Um, for maintenance this year, I did run the motor grader four times on, at, at the resort and uh, went through all the roads four different times. Uh, we had a lot of rain, if you can remember, uh, from July 4th to about August the 15th. I think there were two days that it did not rain at the point of the lake. So we had a lot of a lot of runoff and a lot of everything. And so you had a lot of campfires that yes, sir. was good for business. Huh? Yes, sir. That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Number six is the installation of a, of a separate frost-free hydrant at the new dump station. The new dump station is awesome. It's, it's, it's a beautiful facility. Um, if, if you can imagine that it has a, um, a hose that kind of comes up like so and, and down and it's on a spring and so it kind of springs back and forth and uh, you turn the water on by pushing the handle uh, up and the water comes on. Shh, here comes the water and that's part of the water. What the problem I'm finding is that when people come to dump at their dump station, they're sticking this hose, which which the end of it kind of looks like that, <coughs> and and they're sticking it inside of their their, their sewer tank, and they're you know getting this kind of done, and then you know other people are, are, are coming in and, and, and they're they're filling their water tanks with the same thing. This is a problem, and um, I, I do think we <coughs> need a separate hydrant for filling up tanks and, and, and also, uh, you know, for, for helping with the disposal of waste. Um, and then number seven are the green cam canopies. Um, I'd like for you to take a look at uh, exhibit three yeah. for the green canopies. Um, I've, I've, I've repaired <laughs> and made this, this thing as much as we can possibly do. I mean, they're just, they're rotten, they're old, they're, they're rotten and old. I, you, you can't even listen. How many are there? 40. They're, they're approximately 40. <coughs> These kind of units, like these canopies and so forth, um, I would be willing to put in some labor to, to, to get this done. I mean, I can I can build these things. Uh, you guys buy the material, I'll build them. So uh, those are the things uh, that I have. Um, oh, one more thing. So, so if you, you, you turn your uh, plan of operation to page ten. Um, 
kind of operation uh, asks for a lease uh, other than calling 911 for, for, for rescue and medical help. Um, I, I don't have any other plan. Um, I would like to discuss the, the scope and nature of what's expected of me to provide you with the safety response plan. I'm not sure where to go with this. It, it, it could be, I, you know, I did some research on the internet and so forth, and you could do something real small, and you could do something that would be 500 pages. It, it would just be endless. I mean, you know, do, uh, there, I, I need some direction on this. Mike, uh, Les might have to tie on this too, as to what, what, I think just discussing with him, getting with him, to okay. the requirements might be right. we don't have that information. Sure, I, 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 I understand that. Just point yeah. me yeah. yeah. in a direction and I'll go get it done. Talk to Mike. Yeah. And Mike we'll we'll talk to Mike yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Les then. Um, let's go ahead and talk about, uh, I thank you for your consideration on, on, on those things. Uh, let, let's do one more, uh, let, let's go through some of these exhibits and I'll show you a, a few more things. Let's turn to exhibit two, please. And uh, uh, Mr. Mondragon, before you get off your cap totals, there's a there's a pretty good list, but no estimates of cost. Okay. Well, assume that, that that's on me to get the estimates cost. Oh, well, I mean, it's, um, it's, 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 it's your facility. I mean, you want me to, you know, say, say this, uh, uh, you know, we're wanting to, the, the event center of the hall, you, yeah. you, you know, without some, some guidance from you guys as to what you want as well. Okay. So, so I mean, one thing we need to sit down and, and yeah, we need to sit down yeah. and discuss all that okay. here. One yeah, thing I would say is, you know, when you're talking about doing something with that uh, old bathhouse, you know, as long as it's in stable condition, mm -hmm. that's a large, that's going to be a large project. So I would say that would probably be something that would be, you know, further down the road. Mm -hmm. But the rest that's of this, that's stuff, great. you know, we can look at the, and we can get some cost <coughs> estimates as well with the city manager. Okay. to see what those cost estimates are and then bring it back to us and we can okay. have some consideration. Get some what, what's your required regarding the, I mean, yeah, I, I think the prior tenant, yes. he <coughs> did that himself and submitted, and submitted a plan to the city. I don't remember what we did as far as requirements for bidding. Because some of these projects are, I mean, the, what are the canopies? That's, just, it doesn't rise to the level of materiality, especially if you're willing to do the labor. But uh, can we think about that? I don't know exactly what we did in the past. It was three, well, four years ago. Yeah, we have our. And he didn't do many things. <coughs> right. We have our procurement standards that we have to follow, and you know our responsibilities. So uh, we generally kind of get an estimate to see how much we think it's going to cost, and then there's. There's levels of, levels of whether we require just getting, you know, um, three quotes or a full-blown bid, you know, with right. plans and specs to go all the way up to that and advertise. So that's why I think we need to sit down with some of these and, and actually visit the site eventually to, to get that kind of detail. There's a couple of these items that are relatively inexpensive, but that'll yeah. be something you can sure. run by Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, sir, I was just I thinking. think that it's, and I don't remember, but I'm sitting here trying to, we need some clear definition as to the relationship you as the renter or the tenant have with the city's property. And what we expect you to do, and I realize the previous owner used to do some <coughs> maintenance and improvement <coughs> kinds of things, and he removed, I took some of that back, his costs from that which he owed the city. And it got a lot of hand in, and it was really a cumbersome and uh, unwieldy kind of arrangement. The position you're in, with all due respect, uh, for what you mentioned earlier, you said it's your project, it's your asset, and it is. Maybe what we need to do is, as an onset, is clearly define what your, the scope of your authority and relationship and responsibilities are, and what we're supposed to do. To make this list as you have done, I commend you. And it's probably important for us to prioritize all of these things that you have listed so that we can make it a viable camping alternative. So that we can get the things done. Some things, while visionary, may not be something you need next year. Sure. Okay, I think yeah. these, these more green places to have lunch and picnics and such are probably a priority for what I know about what goes on up there. 
Yes, and, and that would be, I think, we need a greater and and what, relationship what, with what's going on up there. When we renegotiated, or when we did the new lease here, right. I think we had a discussion, if I remember, um, and I saying that because the city was unwilling to do big projects, that the place had fallen into a state of disrepair. Exactly. So what we said is, come to us, and we'll help you out on, on significant okay. items. <coughs> I mean, the minor operating things like down and replacing the windows, that's your profit. You sure, know, sure. Okay. okay. And yeah. the things that we're seeing before us now are, like that one yeah. building, I thought I'd knock that thing down and start it all over. Yeah. But, I, you know, I, I don't know what you're doing. Do we really expect you to repair that? Or do you send pictures to us and say, this is what your place looks like? What do you want me to do about it? Or what are you going to do about it? So I can manage it as a rental. Yes. And, and that's a good thing. I see, and you're probably going to get to yeah, some huge excavation. It looks like you're building roads or something. And if I shut up, you're going to tell us about it. Sure. And I yeah. will do that. I, I'm happy to hear if you are keeping a watchful eye that you are over our asset. But um, we need to have. Uh, have you come down when you're in town for supply and really stop in and, and let us know what's going up there and what's going on or communicate regularly mm -hmm. so we can know what your problems are and what your needs are so okay. that we can be responsible landlords. And especially your especially urgent needs like that one where the, the wall yeah. fell apart. Yeah. yeah. I'm not really glad that you took it upon yourself to do something with it, you know, and, and just looking at it, I can tell that the building would have been lost. Yeah. Yes, sir. Am I not, this is, I'm not mistaken in our preliminary <coughs> budgets, do we not have capital improvement yes. money budgeted yeah. for, for those for every year, right? Right. Yes, sir. Sure. I, I believe it's $50,000. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. So, so uh, get back to uh, Exhibit 2. And uh, Exhibit 2 is going to show um, uh, at the top, and, and all four pictures are going to show buildings, and these are cabins. And uh, what we're doing with these cabins is, is we're repairing um, the stucco and we're also painting the cabins. And um, that, that's on us, that's part of the, the, the maintenance to repair uh, of the contract. Uh, if, if you turn exhibit two over uh, to the backside, you'll see uh, the top picture shows what <coughs> over time uh, what this stucco does. Um, the bottom picture shows the walls, and, and you can see repairs to the walls. Um, again, we, uh, after we repair them, um, we put primer on them and then paint it. And that deteriorates as well. I just had this problem with rental problems. Yes, yes ma'am. It, it, yes, that, that is exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, Halo is tough on it. And uh, you know, the, the extreme weather uh, that we have at 8,500 feet. Is uh, tough on buildings. It's tough on buildings. We are constantly, constantly doing something to these buildings. So uh, just, just to let you know, we're, there, there's, there's a lot of things that happen. That's why I tried to bring some pictures this time. I know in, in previous meetings you were asking to be able to look at some of these things and see pictures and thank you and so forth. And I, I tried to, uh, to to do that. Um, so uh, let's see. Let's let's move over to uh, Exhibit Four. Exhibit four is going to, uh, on the, the top left picture, this is a picture of the dam. And along the dam, uh, there were weeds growing, and uh, as the wind blows, uh, the sand and, and the dirt and so forth, this was kind of creeping up on us. On the right picture, you can see that we removed all the dirt and we removed and, and made that a, a nice clean area. Um, you can also see the road has been maintained, and, and that's what we're doing on that. Uh, the bottom two pictures, uh, the left-hand picture right there, uh, that road right there was just in disarray. It was, it was terrible. It was, uh, and, and we come in and, and did a little road work and, and just got that thing to, to, to flow a little better. Um, over on the right side, uh, you'll see the, the maintenance building um, that's located there. Um, uh, there's a ditch. If you can see what we were doing is we were, we were installing a ditch what was happening is the water was coming from left to, to right or south to north and it was getting inside that building and uh, so uh, we needed to have a ditch put into that thing so it would grab that water before it got to the building and so these are the kind of projects that that I've been doing now for you know the last two years and uh, it's something that we're, uh, we're, we're pretty proud of because I'm, I'm taking this park and I'm doing something with it. We're, we're, yes, you are. We're, we're making it a better place to be. 
And here in a minute, I'll get to some of the, the, the current um, um, occupancy rates and so forth, and, and you'll see that we're increasing all the time. Um, on the back of uh, Exhibit uh, 4, you'll see a, a before and after picture. Um, it's not too great uh, pictures, but, but you'll kind of see what, what how we're conforming these buildings. And uh, what my plan <coughs> is, is I'm going to take about four of these uh, cabins every year. Uh, and, and then we'll get them done over the next three or four years <coughs> and have all of them complete. Turn it over to Exhibit 5. Um, exhibit 5, you're going to see uh, we're installing um, frost-free uh, faucets and so forth uh, in the RV sites. Uh, over on the right, you'll see the new bathhouse facility, and you'll see that uh, the ADA compliant is, is working out really well. We had a, a bus for Walsenburg come, and they had probably maybe eight or ten people in wheelchairs that came to enjoy the lake. They were able to use the facility, and uh, so you'll see that on that one. Um, we do things like the, the, the bottom two pictures are toilets that, that we're taking out that were leaking, and uh, you literally have to take the toilets completely out to do the plumbing to put them back so that they don't leak. Uh, again, just things that we do uh, on, a, on a normal basis to take care of the, the park. If you turn to the very back page, um, you'll see some um, trees. We've got trees that are starting to die on us. There's quite a few trees every year that, that seem to die, and uh, they're nothing more than a fire hazard for us. So we try to cut those trees down and, and get them out of there. Currently, we have about 16 that need to be cut uh, right now. Can you get in contact with like the Stonewall Fire Department and then do some mitigation with uh, Mr. Jim, the logger up there? Oh, yeah. Can uh, they do that? And then you could also potentially sell that wood as fire with you. That's what I was going to say. Yes, sir. That, that's what we do up right now. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the they have that mistletoe that. issue up there periodically, like every seven years. Mm. And they have to get those trees out, otherwise, it spreads it's a fungus that spreads uh -huh. to the trees. And thus, that's a pine beetle kill, which I don't know. It might be, but. Yeah, they do die, and that's the way it goes. So but you could get with them, and they may be able to give you a discount or anything. But they're local. I got you. I got you. I, I try to take care of most of that myself with my maintenance crew. But thank you for the information. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the bottom one is, is is a good old wedding. We're we, we're doing more and more weddings, and uh, it's a it's a beautiful setting for a wedding. Um, it's just it, it, it's a gorgeous thing. I just kind of wanted you to see how that what that looks like. Yeah, and so uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, 2019 and how we did in 2019. Um, I'm not going to get any, any particular uh, numbers. If you like, if you'd like to go in the executive session, I'll give you numbers. Um, I'll give you some percentages and so forth. Uh, 2019 was was it was good. Um, our occupancy rates. Let's talk about Friday and Saturday. Um, our occupancy rates for the full service sites were 96 percent. We were 96 percent over a 16 week period. Um, the lodge rooms were 74 percent, which is actually really not bad for the lodge room because that was something uh, that, that we were lacking. The cabins were 92 percent. So you can see that on the weekends we're full. We're full nearly every weekend. There were several weekends that, that we were calling other people in the community that had similar services and trying to get them some business. What are your cancellation policies? My cancellation policy is 14 days. It's 14 so days within before. 14 days, you lose everything. Yes, yes, ma'am. That, that is correct. Within 14 days, you lose everything. Now, there is a small exception, here, and and if I can rent that space, I'll give you your money back. And, and and if I can't, then that's just on you. But if, uh, but I did several refunds this year that way. Um, during the week is where we're having our problems. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It's pretty. It's pretty lonely up there sometimes. Not all the time, but it, it, it's it's you know. Um, but during the week on our full service sites, we're at fifty one percent. Our lodge rooms average is about twenty eight percent, which is a pretty low occupancy rate. Um, our cabins were about thirty five percent, so about one in three were getting rented. Um, so just to let you know. Um, this year we were open 22 days less than last year. I was into September last year. I was in about the 14th. I'm, so, I'm sorry, October. 
we do about the 14th of October last year. We're the 22nd of September this year. And uh, but number number wise, we made more money and we had better occupancy rates. That that last portion, I was trying to get some of those hunters and some other people to kind of maybe come in and do too well. So I was going to ask you, you know, you're showing your income statement here. And it says nine months ending September the 30th, 2018. Is that, the, is that 2018 or 2019? That, that's 2018 and, and contractually bound looking at our contract, I had to give you that with the operations plan. Okay. It asks for balance sheets and uh, whatever else, for profit and loss or whatever, for the previous year to be submitted <coughs> with the plan of operations. So that's why that's there. Maybe assembly 2019. <coughs> uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, so, um, to let you know that uh, we were up about 18% on our overall uh, uh, overall sales were up 18%. You know, I don't know what the average, you know, net income is for a place like this. You know, from 18 here, it looks like your net income is about 10% uh, from your overall uh, from your expenses. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if it's higher on a typical resort like this, or is it I, less? I, I, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> it's hard to compare apples to apples because there's so many things that go on and line the lake. Right. You know, there's a restaurant, there's a bar, there's just a bar the shore, there's a, you know, there's all kinds of things, a hotel, so forth, so on. The only thing I could think of is maybe if you're having that gap in your percentage of occupancy during the weekday, maybe that'd be a good time to offer locals in Trinidad this kind of rate during the week. Like, 15% off, 10% off, That's come up during the week, bring your kids, something like that. Mm -hmm. Then you get the locals, because the weekends are, I'm sure, mostly out of towners. Seniors, look at, watch. Yeah, yeah, or or offer a weekly a weekly package for people yeah. that need to come in from a hotel. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that, that's, that's, yeah, that's a good discount. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure you're learning a ton just in your second year now. And yes, you sir. probably do things differently than you did your first year. And well, that'll yes, probably sir. continue. Did yes, you sir. offer a discount weekly rate compared to your weekend rates to anybody? No, sir. Not right Something now. Something to consider also if you offer a discounted rate, two different weights, weekends compared to weekdays. Weekdays mm -hmm. to just try to get people to come in for extra days. Okay. That's I've so stayed many right. places that do stuff yeah, like that. Uh, are you having uh, issues where you're feeling you just have the overcapacity and people are calling in for a weekend? Oh, yeah. All and that's time. where you could maybe capitalize and, and all, all the time. Just kind of say, we're full, oh, buddy. Yeah. And we, yeah, during the week we give you this rate. We, we definitely, we definitely have to try that actually, and, and it seems to work a little bit. But you know, all, all the suggestions I can get, I, I'll definitely take everything into consideration, and, and we'll try to get those those numbers up. Um, the other thing is just are at, are you asking for like people coming to stay? Are you leaving something for them to fill out to say how oh, was your stay here? And um, would you consider coming back next year, or what? You know, I haven't so far, here. but 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 again, questionnaire might be a might be a good thing. That would give you might some idea of how to plan for the fall, <coughs> or just sure. setting up a Yelp account, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. or trip yeah. trip advisor account, that kind of thing. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, those are all great ideas. Be, be careful, though. People can get pretty picky on the uh, you know. <laughs> Well, yeah. you get one pissed off person, then well, the review well, goes to crap. That but that, 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 we don't yeah. let that sway but, us. We just respond right back yeah, at our exactly. place Six and like tell them right back. There you go. Good for you. It's not that <laughs> really I remember the situation yeah, at all. Just nice. some data that you can do. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe Absolutely. In the next while, we'll, we'll be getting you some, some more information uh, in addition to the plan of operation so that you can see some numbers. And uh, naturally, that's a confidential type, type deal, but uh, I'll, put, I'll put it back together. Um, my account was super busy. It's into the third quarter with all the stuff due here at the end of October, so he was, he was super busy in, in, in that aspect of it. But uh, you know, I'll look forward to seeing you in another month or something like that. We'll do some hard numbers.
I was just going to ask you real quick. Uh, one thing I mentioned to you last year because you weren't able to put together the uh, fishing tournament. Mm -hmm. Have uh, you had any discussion? I mentioned that maybe start now mm -hmm. to look at uh, the fishing tournament next year. Have you had any discussions with that? No, no sir. Because I know that there's a change in the management up there, so mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you're aware of that. No, sir. Uh, <laughs> I can give you the name of the person. I'll have it with me now, but uh, yes. there's a change coming with the fire department. Uh, Manager right there. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I was not aware of that, and I, I'd be glad to do it. I'll send it to you, and maybe you can start having some discussion. Okay. Ahead, and, and, I'm going to say something about that. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. yeah. If I could, Brian, I just want to emphasize the point. Please, all materials, get it to us days in advance of your meeting, okay? okay. And you could get us one copy if you would like to. Like to but and, and it was very nice of you to have a, a copy for all council members, but Mike needs a copy, um, we need a permanent copy for, for Kimberly, Audra, Donna, I need a copy. You need to make at least 11 copies, if I remember okay. nice. or get us one, and we will distribute everything we need, but we need it well in advance of the, the meeting itself, please, so we can, we can go over that. And anything you do, if you send numbers, Mark that is confidential, it will be treated accordingly. But we need this as part of the permanent record also. Anything you submit, and including your numbers, which will be tender and confidential. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. So have you ever heard of a secret shopper? Yes, actually I have. Okay, yeah. so. Are you one? <laughs> I wish. All right. That would be my dream job, to get paid to go places to the Go shopping. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, but we used to use, Wendy's used to use that one. Okay. So one of my friends were going up to my <coughs> I said, do me a favor. Do a critical assessment of, of the services that you were rendered and the condition, the overall condition. And she sent me a pretty lengthy thing. Basically is what she's telling me is all the bathrooms were dirty. The bathrooms weren't kept up. Uh, most of the bathrooms had no, no toilet paper in them, uh, and a couple of them were out of order. She said from her estimation, she's a nurse, so she's not in the restaurant business, but it's you don't have enough staff in the restaurant to accommodate the number of patrons you have. She said it took them over an hour Saturday morning for our food, and Sunday it was it wasn't busy, but it took over 30 minutes for a breakfast burrito. So. But, um, and she also said there looks like there is a water leak somewhere as water was running down the road near as the highway coming from the hotel, question mark. I think the park is generally clean and I think the staff there works very hard. Brian is very visible and working, helping everywhere. I just think they need more staff. It would be very beneficial. I agree. I find it. Just that why I thank you. I appreciate that. I have a quick one. So one of my high school uh, classmates I hadn't seen in close to thirty years, I bumped into him because he's been coming to Monument Lake for a long time. And since then we stay in touch regularly and his family <coughs> still comes. In fact we had lunch in Raton a few months back and so I asked him, y'all still going to Monument Lake? And he said, you know, we had contemplated because the way things had gotten up there, not going anymore, but we went back this year. And he said, let me tell you what, the improvements that have been made, the new bathhouse and everything else, he was happy to give it another chance. He was happy he went back. And I have to give you kudos because it was another outside opinion of someone that's been going for a long time that was very impressed with the changes that have been made and how you're running the place. So thank you. Um, I, I did the same thing. Ask someone I've known for a long time going up there. Well, I'm just happy, happy that you are taking, uh, it seems like a real personal interest. Yes, sir. And not only from the perspective as managing the property, but I think as a property, uh, just as a resident of this community, you know what this property is valued to you personally as well as uh, the rest of the community. And yes. it looks like just some of these exhibits that you're showing us that you're taking that personal interest in, which I appreciate. Yes, sir, I am. I am, as it's, it's definitely, uh, it, it, it is, it, it is uh, I'm treating it like it's my own. And, and, and that's, uh, that's all you can ask for from, from the agency. Okay, stay in touch. All right, thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Job, thank you. Okay, uh,
One thing I wanted to bring up, which is not on the agenda, but discussion of other possible agenda items. I'll, I'll just throw it out there first. Anybody have any ideas of any other uh, agenda items that you guys would like to have to the upcoming sessions? I think we need another one in September. Right. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. <coughs> any others? We're having another one here on the 28th for the budget, correct? Right. Okay, with that, uh, I just want to bring something up, and I had a discussion with a couple of you, uh, but this came out just this last week in the newspaper, and uh, our ambulance service is no longer wanting to, I think as of December the 31st, to extend service outside of the Trinidad area, and that is very concerning to me. Uh, I just wanted to mention that to you. I think you guys individually could check into it to see what you could find out. I know I've talked to uh, the chairman of the board. I've talked to uh, John Tucker. Uh, I've also had a discussion with uh, the chairman of uh, Los Angeles County. They're very concerned about this. So uh, Luis is checking into some other stuff and he and I will have some additional discussion. Uh, I'm not sure where this is going, even though know, they're a separate district outside of what we can control. But the problem is, is they are using taxpayer money for the services that they're rendering. And that's a concern to me. Wasn't it Mr. Moynihan who came before us a yes. while back and yeah. demonstrated something to the effect about their jackets having different decals that were removable and how he said, we are taking people out of the yeah. district. And they were, he was quite adamant about that, you know? No, um, no. Huh. No more transporting. No, no, no more. We're, we're going to discontinue that also. I, yeah. the the yeah. I don't know if the county funds, but the, the taxpayers. Taxpayers. Right. Right. So yeah. The yeah. ambulatory yeah. district. Primarily an ambulance district tax budget yes. yeah. situation. And if you got a flyer today, you have people in the county. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. And there's some other stuff, and I'm not sure how true it is. I got to talk to John Tucker, and uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll give it to Mike. And then you can send it out to everybody. Uh, I just don't want to say it down with immediate judgment for me. But uh, it's, a, it's a very <coughs> important issue and it's concerning. There was an editorial in today's paper pertaining to this as well. Yep, I am saying. 8102 has an interesting editorial about it. Um, on your website. Quoting the doctor. Sorry. Two of them. Okay. Uh, so I just want to bring that to your attention. The last thing I wanted to mention, and of course, this will maybe even be after we get our new council in place. Uh, as we all know, Judge Gerbrock has that uh, group that she gets together for the drug issue and opioid issues, and she would like to have somebody from council on that group. Um, I was at the event this morning. I was invited to participate, but I had a complication. Yeah, but same thing, I was going to go too. I didn't go, yeah. but I got up on the uh, mailing list okay. this morning, and, and I'll make as many of them as I can. And then you know, when we get the new council on, somebody else may want to go as well. So. Okay. Um, the ambulance district was formed in 1988, and I have a copy of the petition which was then and there circulated. And there are 17 pages of signatures, and I don't have any copy of all of them, but I did copy the part that's always at the top of the petition. And I made copies. I don't think I put them in the copy machine upside down. I intended to have them stapled at the top right, but it's at the lower left. <laughs> so we just got to work it backwards, because here they are. Okay. Thank you. Is there any language in there in particular you want us to take note of? Um, are they just one page? No, there's three pages. They're, they're a single unit, but there are three pages to it. The first is a cover letter, this, uh, the cover thing from uh, Judge Manzanares authorizing it. The second is what was on top of the petition that you signed. And then the next two pages are the initial signatures that were uh, gathered. Okay, but see what it is. No. Okay. Now that you see it, I was trying to figure out. There's one. There's one. There's three pages. Can I can you make a request? Um, after the election, when we have the new council meeting, can they get on the Google Drive? Because some of this stuff is great, and they're not, they don't necessarily have it. The money in the Lake Report, I thought was either that, that good. Either that, or maybe we can um, have copies of the, of the agendas 
uh, going out to the to pick them up? Or are you talking about the entire group? Well, right? Or should we do it? Do we have, do we have to wait council until they are seated? Get them in the <coughs> to get on Google Drive. I think we have to get information beforehand. Yeah, it's not, it's not much confident. They stop. Right, I'm much confident. Yeah, yeah, it's confidential. Is that right. session? Right. Confidential. Once, once the votes are counted we'll, after November and we know yeah. who, well, yeah, I we know have to be sworn to in. Them in the I don't agree with that. I don't What's agree that? with that. I think that it's good the person, if he wins the, the damn election, part of the language, then he should wait until they are totally sworn in by the judge. Nobody has the right, he, he has, he's elected, he is elected official by the people, but he's not sworn into that office until that judge has given him the right. And that's the way, I don't care so, if it's confidential or so not me, confidential. Okay, understood. Okay. So let me interject that our packets are for public. Right. The confidential, so anybody could come in here and Pick up a packet and see what's what's on the agenda. So um, you're trying to run it with the same way like we did our executive session. That's no, all I'm no, going to no, say. No, no. Okay. No, that's, that's, not that's, 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 that's close. Okay. okay. I, would, I would highly advise, though, for change Mr. Bernardo's thoughts, is that people who do get elected should start showing up for the meetings. Well, they should. It should be nice for them to actually be prepared when they listen. Yeah. Right. They should make it three years now. Yeah. Well, some of them are. Some of them are. Okay, nothing else. Meeting journal. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Human nature, Joe. Okay.